dear Scandi PBA lovers. And my topic is best practices while developing with Scandi PBA. So at some point, we considered that developing with Scandi PBA, use all the tools, use our SLint, and so on and so on, is a best practice. So I'm going to show you how all this amazing tool works on, I think, a quite real life example. Let's imagine that we have a, a store which, are, which is sold in clothes. And during the COVID, uh, owner of the e-commerce platform asked us to add a notice uh, right before the header that um, they going to have uh, delivery issues. So let's start with that. And as I told you, we going to create this notice. What we going to do first, we going to create a component. So let's type anti PDA. Uh, create component uh, header header notice notice yeah like that so what is actually happening right now scandi pva cli is creating a component for us here it is and what we're gonna do here we're going to add a CMS block. I already created one in backend. So as you see, it's imported straight here, but we need to change a little bit past of it. And yeah, like so. And identifier is uh, at Header, I guess. Header. And yeah, and now we press Control Save and voila, a slink fixes everything for us. We can delete this, I guess. And for example, if we uh, miss a blank, miss a space after importing something, we press Control S and boom, a slink fix everything for us. So right now we have a component. Let's apply some simple styling. Let's say I want to display flex. Um, I want to have a width of 100%. Also, let's add the index of 109. Margin, margin should be auto, I guess. And justify content center. And let's apply some background color. Let it be uh, orange. Yeah, and I know that there will be some issues. So let's unset margin bottom. And let's unset line, line height. Yes, looks like something similar. And right now, what we're going to do, we need to override our header component render method in order to add this, our newly created component. So let's try to do that. Let's write Kanji PVA override component header. And something going to happen pretty soon. Let's go like that let's keep style and other container okay we have created a header component overriding our original header here it is and let's remove some unnecessary imports from here and as you see, Aslin is highlighting for us that we need to remove this also. Let's press Ctrl S. Oh, it fixes all indentations. So let's call render method. It's already trying to return render super, but we're going to do a little bit different way. Um, uh, let's 
add soda elements. We need to, as you see, a slint seeing everything. And what we're going to do, we're going to import header notice component and we're going to call original uh, render method. And as you see, Aslin still highlighting everything. That's why we're going just to press Ctrl S, so boom, everything fixed. So let's take a look what is actually happening on our front end. And it's going to take a while. And voila, we have a beautiful header notice. But as you may expect, and you can argue that it's kind of down way because we need to override the existing header component in order to add this notice. It's kind of bad manageable and we cannot move these components to another project. So that's why right now, what we're going to do, we're going to remove this uh, notice and we're going to create an extension, Scandi PVA React extension. So let's do that. Scandi PVA ex extension, create header, header, Notice. Let's call it like that. And nothing happened. As usually, because I mistype. Okay, it's doing some work. Most likely, we're going to see um, packages folder in a short moment. Here it is. It's still doing some of his job. Let's remove this because it's not going to under the scene. And here we go. We have a header notice extension, uh, which should be added here. Here it is, header notice. And let's create a component directory and paste our component into here. And remove component from here because we don't need it anymore. And let's change this color to light blue, my favorite one. And what we need to do now, we need to create a file called header component dot plugin dot js. And right now we're going to create an extension that plug into our header render method. And let's copy this one here. Let's paste it here. And let's change the namespace to uh, header. And what else? We need to add our component. Let's import it first. Import from uh, component header notice and we're importing most likely header notice component. Yes, something like that. And now we just need to add it to the render method. Header notice. And as usually, there is a small bug. Okay. It looks like the truth, let's restart the front end. Oops. And with a little luck, we're going to see the newly created notice 
right before the header. And there is no one. Let's take a look inside. Ah, because theme is still building. Then let's wait. Let's wait until it will finish. Yeah. My PC is getting a little bit slower while filming this. And boom, here we go. The light blue header notice. And what I'm going to show you right now is absolutely crazy. We're going to install the header notice from the NPM repository. So what we're going to do, we will write NP, npm install header header notice uh, npm i created this package a long time ago in order to have fun yes my pc is still working please don't break Let's take a look what is happening in our package.json file. And here we go. We have a header notice package installed. So let's copy its name and, and add it here. Boom. And enable this package, this extension. And let's disable the previous one. And right now we will disable this. We will restart the front end. Let's do that. It's again going to take a while, but, but we can handle this. And let's take a look at the front end. As much as I remember, we should see the green header notice. Yes! Woo! Amazing. And what a conclusion. Just start to develop using ScanGPA. Use all the tools. Don't disable Aslint, and you will get marvelous. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Akin, for the presentation, and he will be joining us on the stage shortly. Akin, okay. here's Akin. Here I am. So, you ready for some questions? <laughs> oh, well, let's. Okay. Is it to generate Scandi Feedway extension plugins via CLI? Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, perfect. Um, Unfortunately, right now it's not possible. Uh, we are thinking on the format, how the plugin generation using CLI would look like. If you have any ideas how to structureize the 
queries in CLI, please write me in a Scandi PDA Slack right to me. All right. Um, was Excellence auto fix somehow ever blocking you? Uh, really, no, no. But sometimes I I have getting really annoying uh, red underlining. For example, when my component or container files was too big and at these rare cases i just disable this uh, assignment rule for that and that is but uh, auto fixing really never was blocking me hmm. and why do you prefer white editor why do you prefer editor white theme instead of black one <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the thing is that mm, my laptop screen is uh, kind of a reflection protection has reflection protection and its brightness is really low and at the summer i'm trying to work on the terrace and i can't really see anything using the black screen ah so that's a workaround if you if you work out there yeah okay. that, that's a practical tip practical tip coming from you thank you Pleasure for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll still see Akim in the live Q&A session. And I think that's it. See you there. <laughs>